hey guys and welcome back to Celeste's corner so today we are finally finally two months later filming my um labor and delivery story so i have hector here because unfortunately i don't remember anything like really like anything yeah i, I guess like when when you start to like like talk i might like actually like, remember things oh, yeah, yeah. And, i don't know <laughs> When did this start? We were in the hospital for a week. Yeah, and the way that we got to the hospital, it wasn't like movie theater-ish or anything like that. Yeah. We literally went in because she needed an ultrasound. At April 16th. So we were gonna be having frequent ultrasounds that week. I think it was the Monday, the Wednesday, and the Friday because the week before no, that it was it was monday and then you had to do one on wednesday and then wednesday they were going to um even if she did if even if uh what's the word i'm looking for okay oh, so they're they're gonna, gonna um, yeah they're gonna induce her so basically no they, they said, were gonna induce me on the april 26th no yeah no she said the second ultrasound no yes no i yes. remember they said i was gonna be induced no, they april 26th they, they changed even it. at the baby shower remember? but they changed that they changed it as soon as the baby shower thing happened they changed it okay yeah so before the baby shower they told us that even if like everything because okay so what was wrong was that my fluid levels were low my amniotic amniotic fluid so they told me that even if there was nothing wrong like if this started to get better they were going to induce me on april 26th but then we had our baby shower on april 15th and the next day i was in the hospital for an ultrasound yeah so then they realized that my my fluids were low so then they sent me back to like upstairs to get um the stress tests and monitor the baby monitor me and, and so, by upstairs she means the um in the, hospital. the birthing center like yeah that's the that's the place where we spent most of our time for the stress test and all that if you guys i'm pretty sure you put it on vlogs right yeah so I you guys have definitely have seen it it's just like it's a beautiful place it's just up you just go straight upstairs and then you kind of like walk down the hallway and you'll be right there you can't miss it at st joseph's yeah so then we were there from monday to friday when alexis was born and it was so stressful because i think it was like maybe like you can correct me if i'm wrong i think it was maybe like wednesday they were like oh like you might be able to go home like tonight or even like tomorrow morning yeah and that, and that was and the the final we were kind of like at that point we were kind of like if we go home we're gonna be back here in like yeah. a couple days yeah so then like at first it was upsetting because it's like really like i want to go home i want to stop this i want to have a regular birth where it's like oh my water breaks at home and then i go to the hospital and like ta-da but no it wasn't like that yeah and and with that being said it's not like we, we don't we don't care about how there was low fluid because one thing that we probably didn't mention yet was that even though she had low fluid it went the back entire up. week that we were there it went back up yeah so that's why they were going to send us home it's yeah. not because they were like you have low fluid it's not a problem go home mm -hmm. and they i wasn't having contractions anymore and that's yeah. why i forgot to say on monday when we were there i didn't feel any contractions but they're like yeah we're picking up on contractions with the stress test and i was like yeah what i guess where do we go from here because the, the days until up to the point of when she gave birth were very boring i can say yeah there's nothing to really talk about the, the, all they did was they gave her an iv for like two Since days like, i think it was two days yeah i think it maybe it was from like wednesday to friday wednesday to friday she yeah. had iv um and then i, the, I mean the maybe. only interesting thing that happened was i started burning her from, yeah her, on her right because it was like it was going into my veins and it was so weird like my whole arm was burning like i had to tell them to take it out and put it onto my other hand and like when they first put it in it was it was very cold so i knew like it's cold but then at that moment i don't know what just it burned like it was burning me they gave me steroids steroids that week as well i think they gave it to me like on tuesday um so that her lungs can develop no they gave it to that before that week we were there you put that in another vlog that already happened but they gave me another dose that dosage was for you okay so i remember what they said so that dosage so if she already i'm pretty sure if you guys watched it she already mentioned this mm -hmm. but the second dosage was to just 
Oh, yeah, make sure I don't get an infection. Make sure she doesn't get infections. Because, because if I get an infection, she's going to get an infection yeah. when I push her out. So, that, so that's why they put that steroid into her. Yeah. Uh, and then from there, it was it was just regular waiting. and waiting. Just constant checkups during the night. I checked my temperature, checked my blood pressure. It was good, though. Yeah, so everything, everything, was was, good. everything always came out perfect. So, again, that's why they were like, yeah, like you're probably going to go home. There's not a lot of talk about like the more exciting parts were exciting in the moment. But now that mm -hmm. we talk about it, it's not as exciting because... Um, by exciting, I mean like interesting. So there'd be points when the heartbeat of our baby was really low. Yeah. And we would like freak out. Yeah. But it'd be like, oh no, she's just sleeping yeah. and, and she's gonna get back like to normal. Yeah. And then, and then they, 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 they would make would. me drink like cold, cold water. Yeah. And like 10 minutes later, she's like right back up. Now, the interesting stuff <laughs> happened on Thursday. Yeah. So, so the first thing that started happening, I believe this is from Thursday, right? Um, no, that was... Mm, yeah. yeah, that is, yeah. So this is from Thursday. Okay, so basically what happened was that entire day we were fine. Yeah. And... And so we already knew that we weren't going to go home by Thursday because that was, we were, by what, on Wednesday morning, they told us we could be going home Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. But then I was feeling weird. I started to feel like I was like leaking a little bit more yeah. and like I was just not comfortable going home yet because I felt like it was about to be time. So that day I was having contractions and like towards like the afternoon. I was like, yeah, we have late, a piece of, this afternoon. is the actual piece of paper that was at the hospital yeah so i started so, having we didn't just write this here at home this was actually the same paper from the hospital which is yeah. really crazy because i thought we threw this out I know. but I was it there. started uh yeah april 19th so it started at 407 well no okay so these ones we tracked i believe when we were walking around the hallways right or no like, 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 the, like the last few yeah but basically so, she was having contractions mm -hmm. and it wasn't to the point where it was to the point where we told the nurse but the nurse wasn't too concerned yeah and like then, the nurse was even paying attention to me like i was like yeah like it's like i'm having cramps and she's like oh well the the test isn't picking up on any contractions it just looks like mild cramps yeah and i was like i'm a girl i've had my period since i was 13 i know what mild cramps feel like these are not mild cramps and i was feeling it in my back as well so like even like my mom and everybody was saying my back sounds like back labor and like it, it was it wasn't painful but i knew it was a lot more than mild cramps yeah so then i was like i was saying that and then this nurse that was actually like like good with my mom like the whole week like she was even my nurse well she was like sometimes but at that moment she wasn't my nurse anymore and she overheard me saying that and she just took a look at my stomach and she knew she was like it's like it's gonna be time because she was saying that like you can like see like the different shape of my stomach yeah and then she was feeling it and she's like oh yeah like that's definitely contractions yeah and then so what we did you is, didn't even give them the times though no no hold on because these were the, these are the times of yeah so so uh, the ones that we have is between seven oh um four oh seven and then four, to four ten and then after that it was four fifteen so it's only five minutes apart four fifteen to four eighteen and then four eighteen after 4.18, it was at 4.49 until 4.50. So that one was only a minute long. And then it happened again in five minutes. And it just kept going like that. And So the pattern was basically... It was pretty much every five the, the minutes. The longest, it was five minutes. And they told us that if it was frequent in that, in that way, then that means that it's time for her to move to the delivery room. Yeah. Which is literally from where we were. It's just down the hallway to your right. Yeah. And they have this big door and you actually have to buzz yourself in. You have to let them know that you're here with, like, for example, so if I were to go, I have to say I'm here with Celeste. I'm her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And then that's the only way they open the door. Yeah. Because they have to, you know, it's safety. They have to, safety. And so before we went there, um, we started walking around the hospital because I wanted to make sure that I would make, like, I really wanted her to drop down because I didn't want them saying to me like oh it's just my old cramps like i want to prove to them that it wasn't that she wanted to come so we were walking around the hospital walking like down the hallway and then okay we, we, weren't, we weren't forcing it to, it, so, it really does sound like we were like like oh get it out but like no. i mean we were excited but it, but at this point I it was like we know what it is yeah, cause, like, it, it's been happening for so long and then the other times we're like yeah you're right we got, we're gonna go home exactly but, but this especially time it's like, if we like, went home we were gonna come back in another in the next day or two exactly and like i'm her mom like when you're the one that is pregnant 
you know, you feel the difference. We yeah. were we were in the hospital the the weekend of um, his birthday and Easter, and we thought it was going to be time. But then there was a part of me that I was like, okay, it might not actually be time. But this was the one moment I was like, it's time. Yeah. Came back to the room and then there was this one um, like Asian girl. Like, she's probably like half Asian. I don't know. Anyways, um, she nurse. was she was my nurse and like she was like so cool. Like I loved her. Um, and she knew that the whole week i wanted to switch from my room to uh, the one beside me because we were in a standard room so it's like two people here in a little hallway and then like two people here and we were all just like divided by like these curtains which kind was of. a horror story by the way because like sometimes um, the people beside us or in front of us like they were like terrible that same nurse who was yeah, good so with her mom said you know hey like, i think i'm people, gonna go let people know yeah and so like we were the okay, the people that we we're talking about where they were like um had the lights on we were there and then we want to be back over here where we were at the beginning of the week um because it's just a, a little bit of a, big, a bigger space because we're by the window and so we want to be back there i know it's kind of like choose like beggars can't be choosers but like we want to be back over there yeah and, um, and it wasn't that big of a deal yeah to be it really was and it really and sounds like we're being like like, like picky picky but like yeah. honestly at this point it was like nobody was over there yeah. at the time so and so we were like just move us yeah. yeah so the nurses cleaned up they washed the floors they changed the bed all that stuff mm -hmm. and then they moved that bed all the way like to another room and we got to keep my bed so like i didn't have to like change my sheets or whatever like mm -hmm. so we just put all of our stuff on top of the bed slide it over we went over there and so we had a lot more space he had a better couch to sleep on right yeah because when i had for like the entire week was like broken so yeah so we went over to that side and that's when we really started to like i started to clean up a little bit and um like i got Alexis' stuff ready because like i knew it was going to happen meanwhile it, keep in mind she's still having these contractions like they're, yeah they're still, like, but i was still up and moving i was good i was laughing i was having conversations like I was good. I wasn't laying there like, Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> and then finally, uh, the moment of truth came. So, yeah, so the nurses came with a bunch of other people. And yeah. they said, get your stuff ready. Uh, we're going to be moving you to the delivery room. And they actually told me that I should have been moved there earlier than that. Yeah. Remember? So, at this point, my mom was here, uh, as well as my brother. Mm -hmm. And just her mom. Mm -hmm. And my mom was her, her sister was on the way, but she didn't make it for the for this at this point she mm -hmm. wasn't here yet yeah so Which what, is okay, yeah really happening. so what ended up happening was we were gonna move our stuff but the nurse she was cool enough to say if you guys want to keep this room just leave your stuff here don't worry yeah. nobody's gonna touch it or else like they would like in they would matter, put us back to that other side that we hated or another room like, or another room so yeah we just sorry we just decided that you know leave our stuff here and then my brother's gonna stay here because he doesn't want to be he's not gonna be in the delivery room yeah so and it was late at night there. and didn't he have school the next day yeah yeah no yeah, on friday yeah friday oh yeah he didn't i don't think he went I to school i don't think he went to school but yeah. like yeah so he stayed there he went to sleep on um hector's little couch in that <laughs> room and then so we were in um the labor and delivery from like 11 30 i would say yeah, that's Maybe when, no, that's when, 11 30 is when we got there yeah so we got there from 11 at 11 30 and still i was i was okay they were definitely picking up on contractions and they they set me up with the stress test on my stomach on the bed and then i was telling them like hey i want to walk around i want to bounce on a ball i want to i want to move i don't want to be sitting on this bed i've been sitting on these beds all freaking week <laughs> i want to be up thank you and so this just this happened for 10 minutes so yeah. she got she was on the uh the yoga ball and i was on the yoga ball for 10 minutes it was just 10 minutes this was this went by quick oh, it was terrifying how quick oh yeah so by the time i begged them and by the time they like actually hooked me up and gave me my gown to wear and all that stuff um yeah so i begged them i'm like let me get up and so they got me the ball um actually no i had the ball from like wednesday the, i would yeah, say that room. was in the other room so then the nurse had to go and get it bring it to me um and then so i was just bouncing on the ball i was wearing the gown and obviously no pants or anything yeah. just my sports bra and then all of a sudden i was getting really hot oh and they switched me from no no whoa whoa what you went too fast what okay this happened so she was on the ball for 10 minutes mm -hmm. and then after they said okay lie down 
because now we're going to break your water. Yeah, but wait, wait, I was gonna say something. So the hot, when you started getting hot was when they broke your water. You did that, that's this is your, your no water. on the ball. Remember you had to put the stuff on. That's me? after they broke your water. No, once they broke my water, I I stayed on the bed. No, not for not no. You didn't get hot when you because when okay. When I started putting the cold towels on you was when you started playing the music for Alexis and Yeah, and then I sat them on the bed and they're like, okay, I'm gonna break your water no, and then I stayed a, on the bed and after. they put the ball between my legs Okay, anyways, what I was gonna say was <laughs> um, Was that once they hooked me up on the bed because I'm going I'm backtracking a little bit once they, they hooked me up on the bed with the stress test They they really realized that I want to get up so then they had to take that one off and then put a wireless one on me and that one was annoying because it was like slipping off of me it, it, it didn't work too well but whatever it yeah but it was still thing. monitoring her and i kind of still had to like hold it on my stomach but mm -hmm. yeah so there's that and then so where i was bouncing on the ball for 10 minutes and then apparently they broke my, my water after that yes because okay so what they did was they, they laid her down and they grabbed this like big hook thing like <laughs> a metal hook from like the dentist and they just they just put it in and and then she was kind of like freaked out because she said, like, is it going to hurt? And then it, it felt so good. Like it was just a release of pressure is just how like, to describe it. It's like, I don't know how to explain it. Like it was like you peed. I don't know. It's like you peed after holding it for like how many months? Yeah, I guess. But it was just like so much pressure just gone. Like I felt like my stomach deflated and now it's just kind of like the baby. It's just baby. Like, yeah. which it is. It's not any water anymore. And then after that. It was like this is where the hardcore stuff started happening because yeah. I would so say I, I went back on the ball right she wants she goes back on the ball yeah with the with the monitors mm -hmm. on the wireless one. and I just put like a towel like on the ball and then I would say five minutes after that because at, at 11 50 they started giving us a time and then yeah. they so basically it was 11 40 and then that's when they popped her water like or broke her water mm -hmm. And then five minutes after that, so 11.45, she yeah. starts getting super, super hot. Mm -hmm. and, and so I was asking them, I'm like, can you guys like, turn, turn up the AC? Yeah. And the nurse said, it's the highest it can go. And Which then, was, it, it was cold in there, but like, I was just nervous, so it was hot for me too. And then she was going through her contractions. So So then we got um, a cold cloth and like he wiped it on my face and on my back. Especially. Which is a bad idea now that we think, like, yeah, we think about it. Yeah, because I ended up getting sick, sick afterwards. Mm -hmm. But it was soothing her at the moment. Yeah, so you know what, like, I don't know. Whatever. Care. Um, and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna go, like, uh, no, I didn't, I didn't want to go and lay down. I think it was because, like, the monitor was, wasn't doing that well, right? I think it was. No, like, okay, so she didn't want to lay on the bed. She really didn't. But the pain got to a, it, this is when the pain started. So at 11, 11.45, but, she started getting hot. And then tell 11, them why the pain got bad. Um, because I played music for Alexis. Oh yeah, so she started so, playing. What was it again? Um, No Limits by Cardi B. <laughs> and, and my whole pregnancy, that was Alexis' song. She'd be. It still is. It's really be, crazy. She yeah. loves it. She just smiles when it's on. It's weird. She would be sleeping. I, I guess like she's not moving at all. And then I play that song, and she's just like moving like crazy. Yeah. But then, so I was like, you know what? I want her to like move. So then I'm bouncing on the ball, and I put that song on. I didn't even make it halfway. I yeah. I didn't make it halfway through that song, and she was just kicking and kicking and punching, and she was pushing downwards. Yeah. Like she's like, I want to come out and dance. <laughs> so from like 11:45 until 11:50 for those five minutes, we were counting how bad like they were, right? Mm -hmm. And they would come for a minute and then disappear, come back for a minute. So this is just five minutes, right? But like for us, it felt long. Yeah. So the nurses finally said, okay, you know, it's 11:50, uh, and she was apparently like seven centimeters mm -hmm. dilated. No, I was seven centimeters when they broke my water. Okay, yeah, so she, yeah, so yeah. she was seven centimeters. Mm -hmm. They brought in a student mm -hmm. uh, who was, he was pretty cool. Yeah, he was with us like all week anyways. Yeah, uh, and he had to check her dilation again. And so at 11.50, he made a mistake. It was an honest, honest mistake, but he said that she was nine. So we were like, one more to go, you know, like, yeah, we're mm -hmm. excited. Then 11, like, 52 came along and then they did it again. Or like, 50, no, 11.55. Like yeah. 
11 55 they came and they're like no you actually just ate yeah so you have two more to go and it and was terrible like this just is to, just to backtrack like a lot he did this before um on that monday that i was admitted he told what was it again he measured he, and he then, gave us the, the five it, it was five what he gave us no no i think he was he was lower so he gave me um a two and then the doctor came in checked me and then yeah, yeah. she said um, I'm actually a three. Yeah. And then, so she asked me, she's like, is it okay um, if we let him check you one more time? I know it's painful, but it's for educational purposes. And for me, I'm always like, yes, like. Learning if, opportunities if, are important for us. Yeah, yeah. So, like, if you can use my body for education, go do it. Like, unless you're not, like, cutting me open and stuff, you know? Yeah. yeah. But if you're just going to check me for, like, a minute, that's okay. So he checked yeah. me. He figured out that, yeah, I actually am three. Yeah. And so that's what happened on Monday. So yeah. back to. <laughs> so basically at 11 55 it was eight and then it took her just five minutes so this is when 12 hits now i'm making it sound like it was like oh that sounds easy no like until 12 this was she was screaming she was yeah. like in pain she was i was she had like a fever um they the doctors actually came to talk to me on the side so like they pulled me to the side she they, she was in so much pain that I she didn't, didn't notice and there was a lot of time because I had my eyes closed most of the time because it was like comforting to me. But there was a few times where I was like, okay, so let's calm down, open your eyes a little bit. And every time I opened my eyes, everything was blurry. Not yeah. only because there was like huge trucker lights on top of me. It was weird. It's like right on top of the ceiling. And there yeah. were like, you know those lights on like a, a Jeep? Like those really <laughs> like high beam ones? Like, yeah. Yeah, so not only were those just straight in my face, like... I, I just I couldn't see like I was no it was, was she was in a lot out. of pain it was terrible I, like uh, me me seeing her like I I can't even imagine what that what that felt like for yeah. her like, and and I was just there watching this you know and yeah. it was really really tough yeah. because and I don't like seeing her in that situation yeah. I don't think anybody would if there's anybody out there who's been there with their partner when they gave birth you guys know that it was like. You know, it's a really intense moment. If it was as intense as ours, I don't know. Maybe some people have it smoother, but this was insane. This was this was smooth. Uh, yeah, yeah. This was definitely smooth. Um, so yeah, so I remember like um, right in front of me when I'm laying on the bed, there was um, a digital like LED um, clock. And I remember just seeing a bunch of red like dots. Like it w I couldn't even see what time it was. And there was also a poster to my right. And I was trying to read that poster. Though I don't even know what that poster was about, to be honest. And so I couldn't see anything. And I I remember just screaming, screaming, screaming. And it was so painful that the so more I screamed, the harder for me to mama. bring it back down. So you know, I didn't want to scream. I have him telling me to you know just let it out and. Like, yes, I'm just going to let it out. But then it was also hard for me to stop it. Like, I just, I don't know. I just felt so comfortable to yell. But I was like, Celeste, like, you're being, like, ridiculous. So calm at, down. At that point, it wasn't. Because, like, it, what, if you guys were just... I guess from my perspective, it was kind of like, like, this is insanely painful. Mm -hmm. And at least I know, like, when <laughs> I stub my toe, it's not the same magnitude. But, like, you know, it was <laughs> like, mm, like, oh! So, like... I, I kind of had that mentality, I was like, you know, this is a really big problem, so just let it out. Like, yeah. don't hold that in. Yeah. But, as, she's, as she was saying, it was blurry for her, but it just so happens at the same time, um, the doctors pull me aside, and they are, they are just telling me, that, look, there's a very good chance that she's going to pass out. And I was like, what you, is that okay for the baby? And is that okay guys, for her? If you guys have watched my pregnancy updates, I, I passed out twice during my pregnancy. Yeah. And so... I, I was I was concerned because I was like, what do I do when she passes out? Like, what what's the procedure after that? So she says that as soon as she passes out, they have these gas tanks right behind her, which they set up. She had no idea this was happening, by the way, because I talked to her after, and she's like, I did not know that happened. Yeah. But they were right behind her, and then they're like, we're just gonna put the mask on her face to have her have oxygen, and we're gonna have to just do an automatic like um, kind of like wake her up type deal i don't know how they were gonna i don't know how they were gonna do it i, think I can't they would say. just wait for me to wake up yeah and then to see how okay she would be after coming back from a from passing out fainting, yeah. and then they're just gonna be like if she can't do it then it's a c-section yeah because if she's gonna be fainting like this we can't have her try to push right so 
that was scary for me because I'm like, wow, like I did I didn't know it was this bad because then she showed me on the monitor, she said that her heartbeat is very, very low. Mm -hmm. And it was really scary, but she did okay. And keep in mind, I had no epidural. We didn't even mention that. Yeah. I had no epidural. Mm -hmm. And there was a moment where I was really, like, doubting myself. And it was extremely painful when I was... And um, this was she was at 7, 8, 8. No, 9. Oh. Yeah. Because I remember saying, I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. Give me the epidural. Like, I want the epidural. And they checked me um, to see, like, how far along I was. And it was 9 centimeters. And I had to be 10 centimeters, right, to start pushing. So then um, they were like, Celeste, like, you only have one more centimeter to go. By the time you get the epidural, um, because the anesthesiologist, um, is that the guy that does it? Or... It was a lady, it was a okay, lady. Okay, whatever. She came so, in, she talked to me too. She, like, if she was talking to Celeste, but like, everyone thought that Celeste wasn't listening. Yeah. But well, she I, was. I was. Like, I remember all the conversations. It's just like, I, obviously, she's not going to reply to you. She's going like, to hear you, but she's not going to be like, oh, yeah, you're mm -hmm. right. Like, I, I, I was just laying there and going, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she ended up looking towards me. And what I remember her saying was that there is no point of giving her to her because by the time she feels it, yeah, we're going to be my, past the. Yeah painful part because apparently the person that does it was with another patient right now so yeah. like by the time that person comes to me by the time they put it in me and then by the time it actually like yeah. kicks in that wasn't even I the reason that, already... we, that she didn't do it yeah. because she didn't do it because she was shaking like crazy yeah. it was so like she was I in the middle that of the like frozen ocean it was insane yeah i made that decision without even like talking to anybody because um i was like okay i got this was all going on going on in my head so i was like okay celeste so you have to sit still for an epidural, yet you're shaking uncontrollably. So, um, and I know that you have to get it done during um, during your contraction. So at my next contraction, I did it mentally. I was like, okay, so I stop shaking and just like sit there, like don't move. I want to test myself to see if I can do it and stop moving because yeah. if I move during the epidural, then they messed me up and that's a serious problem yeah and turns out i couldn't do it i i really couldn't do it i tried my hardest to stop moving and i was just shaking yeah. and i was also doing this thing with my legs i was going like this but with my legs and like it helps like i was kind of kicking my mom but not like boom but it was like i don't know my mom can tell me if it hurt i don't know but like i was kind of just like like i would my feet would touch her hip and then like it was like no know. she was kicking the hell out of her mom like she was like like boom boom like it was was it actually yeah like your your mom was like laughing because th there was parts where like you were hurting her it, it was bad but and this is just to let you guys know how bad that pain was for her because like i didn't know at the same time while she was kicking and she's yelling and then she's like breaking my hand and then like her eyes are closed and then Aww. she's telling people shut up <laughs> i'm sorry mom um <laughs> But yeah, yeah no. so apparently it's kicking my mom over. So she had a 10 minute duration to get to um to 10, 10 centimeters. centimeters. So 10 minutes was really impressive. The doctors were like, this is great. Yeah, this is from great 9 news. to 10 link. So now after that, it's 12. So at, she was born at what, 12 20? No, 133. 133? I think so. No. Look. I think it was 133. So then. That makes no sense though with the timeline. The timeline makes oh. no sense. Because okay, I have like photos of her when she was little. Let's see like what time they were at. Cause that would mean that you had an hour of giving birth. That makes no sense. You didn't you only did it for twenty minutes. I don't know. No, it was Maybe at twelve. I'm, are you sure? Yeah. You just asked one. I know it was at 12. Let's just say it was 12 because 1 o'clock seemed... I think at 1 was when I everything bad. I finished. Like I, no, I, I swear it was 1.33. No, it was 12. Because look, we were back in the room when I said... Did you forget they took picture? like they took an hour to stitch you up? But it's 4.30. And another hour for you to breastfeed her. And then 4.30 was when everyone left. Jeez. It was at 12. Whatever. Anyway. Okay, but I say that. At 12, she had, tw so at 12, right at 12 o'clock, she, she reaches 10, it's great. So now we have as much time as we needed to push out the baby. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Which only lasted 20 minutes. So she was she 22 minutes to be exact. <laughs> but she did it amazing. Like it was great. Like she was pushing good. Um, <laughs> it's it was really insane because like there's moments where like can we do this? Can she do this? You know, am, am I supporting her enough? It was it was really intense. Um, and just to like let it be known that she was yelling when she had pain, but when she was pushing, she was yelling. Yeah, and I will put a clip here. So you guys saw that clip and that is um yeah. insane like oh my gosh hard. when i when i first watched that clip the day that we came home i was like why didn't anybody stop me well, yeah. <laughs> okay so i'm editing this video and i'm just gonna say that clip is so embarrassing i can't believe i'm even putting that in this video but um just ignore that and continue watching this video and subscribe yeah after that, so it took 22 minutes exact, baby comes out, she's beautiful, she's healthy, it's great. Uh, to get into the specifics, she came out crying for like a literally 20 seconds? Yeah. That's that's being too generous. She came out like wham wham, and then she just stopped. And so I guess like they got nervous and like they, usually like they'll give like skin to skin right away, but they didn't do that for me because I guess they got nervous crying. that she wasn't really crying. But then they laid her down and it was, she was perfectly fine. Like she just it's didn't just that she cry. didn't want to cry, yeah. Cause like, I feel like she was just so ready to come out. She's like, oh, like I'm, I'm, I'm here. Out. I knew this was gonna happen. I'm not scared. <laughs> oh, as, as, this, as if this wasn't even enough, right? Cause you know, like what is life? But um, right after that, they, the doctor says to me, you know, you know we're gonna have to stitch her up. And I don't know why they were talking to me out. about this. They should have been talking to her, but whatever. They just they came to me, which is so strange. But they're like, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take out the placenta. Yeah. And I was like, how do we do that? And <laughs> at first they they wanted they asked me if I wanted to do skin to skin with her, and like I was like, you know what? No, like let me calm down yeah. and let you guys do your stuff, and then when everything is done, then I go. I will hold my baby girl. It, it was very intense because like I, I can say that for a fact. First of all, I didn't want to see the birth happen. <laughs> As in, I didn't want to look down there. And but what do I do? I look down there. <laughs> and it is the most terrifying thing, but at the same time, the most beautiful thing because it's kind of like, like, our baby, this thing that was like this, turns like this, and it's just... <laughs> the nurse, or the doctor, I should say, says, come look at your baby. And then when I look, it's just the top of her head. Yeah. And I'm and like, like, oh, I almost fainted. Because I kept I saying... literally almost fainted. Why? Because I didn't want to see that. I wasn't mentally prepared. <laughs> and then I look at it. And I'm like, oh my god. That's my child. <laughs> and for me, it was nasty. Because they... Then she they, touched it. <laughs> they were like, your baby's head is out. Because I think that was like, around the moment. Where I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> and then they are like, the baby's head is out. Do you want to feel? And I reached down. And I'm like... Ew. Ew? <laughs> yeah, it was, just, like, it was insane. It was so soft and gooey, like eh. So those, that's just a little detail. Um, so then, as I was saying before we got distracted, <laughs> they pulled me aside and said we're gonna take out the placenta. So the method that they had was that they 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 told it was gonna be pressure, but they really with their hands they pushed very but hard like, onto the top of her abdomen, like that right felt here. So good. And then they were it was like kind of like they were rolling like a burrito. <laughs> And then they got to the bottom of her stomach, and then they grabbed the cord, and he wrapped it around his finger, and just, and it was like this burrito thing. There is a picture of the placenta, but I don't know if YouTube's gonna allow that. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna. Um, but it's like this. His mom took that photo. Like I was like, no, I don't want to see it. I don't want to keep it. It's like it. I don't a pancake eat it. of blood. No, thank you. It was a pancake of blood, and it just looked like a liver. It was nasty. And they put it on the tray. My mom, my mom at the moment goes up. She's like, "Let me take a picture." And then they're like, "You want to take a picture of this?" And they're like, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> that was the craziest thing. Oh um, my gosh. I, she still has that picture. It's insane. Every time I look at him, I'm like, "Ew." <laughs> but um, so that's the method. I, I don't know. Somebody can in the comments can explain what that method's called. I I don't think 
I don't know too much about birth giving, but she didn't know about that either. Yeah, usually you have to push it out. That's what I yeah. heard. But they just rolled it out of her. And then it's, for her, it was great. And then the doctors were impressed because they're like, you shouldn't be enjoying this. Yeah, but like, it felt be... so good. Yeah. After that, they basically say that they had to stitch her up. Uh, they showed me all the places that they were going to stitch. So in total, it was four places. Each one with like a gash like this. Not, not like that, but like, you know, like that. It's pretty big, especially for internal. Yeah. And they were just gushing blood. So they basically said to me, uh, they're going to stitch it, I had, up. Was it 10 stitches in four places? Something like she that? got 40 stitches total. 10 in so. each space. Yeah. Um, so, 40 stitches. So that one that tore was the only spot that I tore it. The other spots, they still had to stitch me up even though I didn't. Um, tear what they explained was kind of like a stretch kind of like a carpet burn kind of yeah like so like imagine imagine like when you get carpet burn or when you like kind of like uh, scrape yourself yeah it was plus like a, scrape. A, a thin line that's cut but thin enough to the point where like it's deep that's what happened yeah I know this is a lot of information for you guys but like it, it's as specific as I can get yeah she said that she's gonna use a certain type of anesthetic they just yeah. you know they, like, just... they numbed me up and then because the reason it, I say specific anesthetic because it wasn't like legit anesthetic it was like it was to numb that area yeah, before they stitch so yeah. I didn't I felt it but it wasn't like bad yeah. but that spot that actually tore like but, they um, yeah, they had to keep putting that freezing stuff it and wasn't it wasn't work I felt it all and it hurt no. a lot <laughs> and I will say afterwards for the aftercare that's the only spot that hurt that was not even it didn't really hurt but like tmi again like when you pee and then um that that, that was a, that was a part that took the longest to heal but i healed amazing it was, yeah very very good by i would say by four weeks i was 100 percent good yeah and then i got my period right after that so like everything's been amazing yeah. The stitches were done. Um, she finally got to hold Alexis. She was able to hold her. It was, it was at that point, it was kind of surreal. I don't want to say traumatic because traumatic is something that you can like you, you want to forget. But it was traumatic in the sense of like, you know, we did it. Mm -hmm. Something that a lot of people tell us because we were young that we couldn't do or we shouldn't have done. You know, a lot of people doubt you. But little, the moment the child arrives, all that goes away. It, it just I mean, it's like, like we're parents it, it, now. Yeah, like, it's, it's like no matter the age, no matter the situations, yeah. like we're parents now and we have a healthy baby girl and mm -hmm. I don't care about any hate, any kind of disagreements yeah. that anybody has, friends, family, I don't care. Yeah. Like, and, and, like at this it point, is. it's like not to say that we've been through it all, but like we've been through one of the one of life's biggest challenges because it really is mm -hmm. because it takes a lot of courage and like a lot of passion and love to be in this situation and to go yeah. through with it because remember there are people who do not go through with this yeah and the fact that we did and we're here and we're, we love her we take care of her like you know as young parents it's kind of for us is big yeah and especially for brag, him, because you know. like you know a lot of a lot of fathers unfortunately here they won't go through with it yeah. they'll be like oh well you deal with it and they'll leave but no he was with me the whole time he was at every single doctor's appointment he was there every time i needed like a craving something i was craving he was there every time i needed a back rub a foot rub every time i was crying for no reason yeah. especially afterwards like i i will say that I had a little touch of postpartum depression i i will say that but you know there's a lot of crying for no reason and he was he was there for me he was there for me during like he's just my 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 support my my person for those <laughs> people that watch me snap me um, the day that's that's all that ended up happening it yeah. was crazy um the dying. yeah the camera's <laughs> dying because i talk too much but hopefully it makes for a good video yes so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys have any questions leave them down below um i will be filming a baby q a so make sure you guys ask me questions please 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 so thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys next time on Celeste's Corner.